I feel most color photographers are composing with color and not image. I call it wimpy photography. A lot of people in color use that morning glow, that afternoon glow, which is okay. It's really fun because I've been in, in uh, Tetons uh, with, uh, before sunrise and the color photographers are out there waiting for that aspen glow and I'm waiting for them to leave so the sun comes out. <laughs> it's kind of fun because when I'm getting ready to shoot, everybody else is gone. They've done their thing and the good stuff is just starting to happen. When you're shooting black and white, you're looking for texture. Um, whether it be in the clouds, the grass. I basically use filters in the film. I use basically yellow, orange, and red. Now, you have to understand when you use filters, it affects the whole scene. Because when you go to books, they talk about filters. They usually talk about the sky. They don't talk about the foreground because the foreground changes too. Like if you have uh, a red filter and the sky goes really neat and you have some red roses in the foreground, you'll have a bunch of white pick uh, popsicles because they'll all turn white. When you used to do, they used to do a lot of black and white movies before the color movies came out. And they would use a red, because it was black and white film, a red filter on the camera. So what they'd have to do is to paint the actor's lips blue to make them look natural. If they were red, they would all have these white lips. So in movies uh, and, and shooting black and white, they had to do a lot of color work in the background so it would come out the way they wanted it to look. What's great about shooting digital instead of the film I, can don't have to, I don't have to put a filter on here to release three stops. I can use Photoshop to do what I used to do in, in the filter in the camera. When I want the skies to go darker, I use an orange or yellow or red filter. Well, you can do the same thing in Photoshop. Uh, this is my wife's uh, wise opinion that was I, do, I do naturally because I just see things in strong compositions. That's what you have to have in black and white, a strong composition, because just because you have a big old blue sky doesn't mean it's a composition. Or you, you can't use color for your composition. And if you look at most famous people that do color, you take that color away, it's, uh, it just isn't there. Here, in black and white, you're dealing with white, grays, and blacks. And that creates a oneness to nature. Because what's more important, the blue sky or the green grass? So in black and white, they all have the same importance. So I think that is also one of the, one of the assets of shooting black and white, is the oneness of the photograph. People ask me, how, uh, is color difficult? Well, sometimes it's like shooting fish in a barrel because You've got these colors to work with your composition, and you don't have to have a composition in the, in the wilderness. I mean, you don't have the trees, you don't have the grass. You don't have to create a, a really good composition sometimes when you can rely on color making your composition. But to do a good color shot with good composition is just as hard as black and white, or maybe harder.